and body. And last week we talked about the spirit. Does anybody remember what we what we said concerning the spirit? The spirit is everlasting, eternal. Okay. Anybody else? Spirit dwells in us, okay? What else do you remember? What did we talk about when it comes to the Spirit? It moves. It moves. The Spirit moves. The Spirit gives life. Amen? Anything else? The Spirit makes the intercession for us, okay? What else do you remember? taking notes. I hope you remember. And I, I don't really want this teaching to be something that you come in here and you say, man, that was good. There was a little revelation. But I want you to actually apply it to your life. Because it defeats the purpose if you're constantly coming to church and we are not applying what we hear. Amen? So I'm not going to get into the details of it. And uh, on last Wednesday we started, you know, uh, talking about angels. And we started, we actually focused on the first year of angels. Amen? Does anybody remember who was here on Wednesday? Do you remember what we talked about when it comes to angels? We talked about the cherubims and the seraphim. What do you remember? Tell me what you remember. Seraphim is a six-winged angel. What else? Sunday, or do you really want to be transformed? And God willing, really, next week if we have time, we'll probably show you another video. Maybe when you go home at your own time, watch the other video that I sent to you. Thank you, Sister Sherman, for sharing these videos. You know, she's been doing her own research too and seeking God. I'm glad to see that. Take your walk seriously because there are a whole lot of things out there that we take for granted. The enemy is working. He wants your soul. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Oftentimes we mistake the soul and the spirit. We, we, we can't differentiate between the soul and the spirit. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So when we go, we, we, we come to church and we feel something in the soulish realm, we associate it with the spirit. And it's not really the spirit. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Soul, spirit. If, and, not, and, and the, the, the truth, the devil is not scared of a powerless Christian. You can call yourself a Christian all you want. But if you have no power, he's not scared of you. The Spirit, the Word of God, it came, or this gospel, it came in Word and also in power. So if you are hearing this Word every Sunday and, and I'm not seeing the power, or we are not seeing the power, the devil is not afraid of you. He's going to send his demons after you. He wants to snatch your soul into the pits of hell. He wants more souls in his kingdom. While God is busy establishing his kingdom, Satan is also busy establishing his kingdom. Because he's trying to prove a point to God that he also has power. That he can also win this battle. But we know that our God is sovereign. And I know... We talk about the grace. The, the grace message is great and all of that stuff. But don't forget the foundational stuff of our belief system. There is a heaven and there is a hell. 
And Jesus is coming back again for his saints. And that Satan is also working to secure his territory. Amen? Amen? So today, let's talk about the soul. Amen? Somebody say, the soul. The word soul can refer to both the immaterial and material aspects of humanity. Unlike human beings having the spirit, human beings are souls. It's in its most basic sense, the word soul means life. However, beyond this essential meaning, the Bible speaks of the soul in many contexts. One of these humanity eagerness to sin. Humanity is naturally evil and the souls are tainted as a result. The life principle of the soul is removed at the time of physical death. So again, let's go back to Genesis. I believe it's Genesis chapter 3. Sorry, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. When God created man from the dust of the earth, the Bible says that God breathed into man. So God created the body first, dust. Then God breathed the spirit into man. Then man became what? A living soul. So man was lifeless. And when God breathed his spirit, then we have what? Life. So God breathed, the spirit breathes and gives life. That's what the Bible said. The spirit, the letter what? Kill it, but the spirit gives life. God breathes his spirit into you so that you may have life. And Jesus reiterated, I came that you may have what? Life. And life what? Abundantly. So, the soul is where all the emotional stuff resides or dwell. And especially in church culture, oftentimes we associate soulish things with the spirit. So, whatever that went on today in worship is great. Because your spirit is supposed to control your soul. Amen? So, where you position your spirit determines where your soul will be. Where you position your spirit will determine where your soul will be. If you have the Spirit of God, then your soul will be led as such. If you have the Spirit of the devil, your soul will be led as such. Amen? Are you with me? Amen. Can somebody go to Genesis 35, 18? Genesis 35. Genesis 35, 18. And I read. It says, And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. We're talking about the soul. If we can go to Jeremiah 15, 2. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 2. I will read from verse 1. And it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this, this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whether shall we go forth, then thou shalt tell them, That saith the Lord, Such are for death to death, and such are for the sword to the sword, and such are for the famine to the famine, and such are for the captivity to the capti captivity. And what he's saying is, at the point of death, it's split, it's separate. We learn from, from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 4, 12, it talks about the word of God being sharper than any two, and just for dividing the soul, the marrow, and the body. It actually, that's where it's split. So when you die, your soul departs, detaches itself from your body. Amen? Because when you, when you, when you die, you have no emotions, you have no feelings, your soul is the one that is the, is, is, is the entity that's responsible for your emotions, your feelings, your desires, your lust. And knowing that Satan is the God of this world, Satan owns this world. Understand that. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all the inhabitants that dwell in. God owns it, but God has given authority to Satan. God has given this earth to Satan. How do I know that? After when Jesus was on was in the wilderness, Satan approached Jesus and said, If you are the Son of God, bow to me, and then I will give you all these kingdoms of the earth. Amen? So if if God, if, if it belonged to Jesus, why would Satan offer it to Jesus? God is all sovereign. And Jesus could have said, 
get away from me. I own this thing. I run this thing. But Jesus understands the concept of order because right for now, Satan runs the show until his time comes. And as we go through the book of Revelation, there's going to come a time where the children of the Most High God, we will also reign. We will rule and reign with Jesus. Amen? Amen. But for now, he owns it. He runs it. And all that he is doing, because he, 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 he has so much knowledge about this creature, that the creature, this body, is full of lust and desires. Everything that he throws at us is to entice us so that our souls may fall victims to all his schemes. Yes. So some, some people go to churches and the, the truth is not being spoken. Amen? Amen. Because, and, and, and again, let me caution this as, as, as a church, and I said this the other day, sometimes when we say certain things, we rebuke in love and stuff like that, people are like, oh, well, uh, the pastor says something or someone says something to me and I got offended. That's the spirit of pride. And the Bible talks about it. In the last days, many shall be offended and will fall away from the faith. So you can't tell anybody in church, well, you don't pay my bills. You don't tell me what to do. Be careful what you allow to enter your heart. Because that's what happened to Judas. The Bible says Satan entered his heart. And straight away, he betrayed Jesus. In these last days, be careful what you allow to enter your soul. What do you desire? What drives you? Are your desires aligned with the desires of God? Don't get me wrong. God has so many great things in store for us. Prosperity, all of that stuff, wealth, all that stuff is great. But that's not it. That's not the end of the all. As a matter of fact, if, if you serve God right, He will give those things to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's what? Righteousness. And it's what? Righteousness. He didn't say, seek ye first, or oh, seek, seek the kingdom of God and its wealth and righteousness shall be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and it's what? And what? All other things shall be added unto you. So there are certain people that go into a church certain where the truth is being spoken, they cannot fathom because their minds are messed up. Because they think this whole, and Jesus said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not all about wealth and get money and get there and get rich and get delivered. And get, it's not about that. It's all about your soul and your spirit. There is a war going on right now. There is a war going on right now. There is a battle, and the battle is over your soul. What have you given your soul over to? I hear these sort of people in America, they sell your soul, like literally, they, they sell your soul to the devil. And they actually trade. They, they go to, again, you see from the video that we show you when, you when you look at it later. You go to an Obia man or Voodoo man, whoever is that channel, and they will say, well, I want to be wealthy for, I don't know, five years or ten years. And they will pay and sell your soul. So someone says, okay, fine, my soul cost is worth $10,000 or a million dollars. or It's a contract that you sign with the enemy. Now the enemy has your soul because the devil knows the desires of men. What man wants, men want, want fame, money, women, men. Short-lived excitement, joy, or happiness, if I would put it. What have you aligned your soul with? Amen? Let's continue. The soul performs rational intellectual functions. The rational will never capture the wind. This is why we are able to discern God with our souls alone. So some people go to certain environments or what I feel like, or if you, if you went to a church and you say, well, I didn't feel anything. It's your, did your spirit discern, or when you wait for your soul to discern something? Because if your spirit is not in the right place, then your soul cannot make that determination because all that you are looking to do is to cause your flesh or your soul to fulfill the desires of your flesh or your body. Amen? 
My people worship me with your lips, but your hearts are what? Far. There are a lot of us today that we say we love the Lord, but deep down in our hearts, we don't. By our actions, by how we speak, how we talk, how we react to the things of God or the Word of God, we don't, we don't love Him. And we need to stop playing church. We need to stop playing church fools. You cannot come to church every Sunday and remain the same. Amen. This is about your eternal salvation, eternal inheritance. Where have you aligned your soul? Jesus puts it this way. What does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? All the struggle, everything that we are pushing so hard. We are pushing in the, in the marketplace and with work and school and everything. Jesus said, what does it profit? Because at the end of the day, you will lose all of that. But what happens to your soul? I think about this every now and then. At least once a week. It passes through my mind. I say, God, I, 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 I work hard. All this for what? One piece is I'm going to drop dead. Then what? Seriously, you can die tomorrow, then what? It's your salvation secured in Christ. Are you going to drop dead today and, and say you're going to send his demons to come and escort you to hell? Or are you going to stand before the Father? What does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Align your spirit in the right place so that your soul will be secured. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? See, the soul is a combination of our mind, our will, our intellect, and our emotions. Our mind, the will, our intellect, and emotions. And that's why it's very important that you yield your mind, your will, your intellect, and emotions to God. And ladies, let me say this. Don't yield your emotions to a man. Don't do that. Because your emotions are associated with your soul. And we talked about this on, on the prayer call the other day about soul ties. When a man and a woman get together, they become one. And you move on from one relationship to the next and you don't deal with the soulish issues. And next thing you know, you behave and you act like you have ten, personal, ten different personalities not realizing that you've taken on other personalities on you. Let's go back to the cherubims, the seraphims. Some with multiple wings, multiple heads. So this tells me that within, in the spirit realm, you can also have multiple personalities. Amen? Amen. And medically, they call it what? Bipolar. Because doctors don't have the understanding of these things. We, we try to medicate everything. We try to name everything in the guise of medicine. Bipolar. How can you be one, one person that have multiple? But again, we know he takes the spirit. Jesus gets up the shore and meets a demon possessed man. He said, some man, have you come to destroy me? He said, what's your name? Jesus said, what's your name? He said, my name is what? Legion, for we are what? Many. What are you possessed with? Do you know what possesses you? I want you to go home today and start analyzing your life. What possesses you? What kind of spirit possesses you? Because based on what possesses you, you will see the result based on your reactions in the soulish room or in the natural because that controls your body. If it's a demon of Abaddon, lust will control you. If you're struggling with food, lust, addictions, and all these, there is a spirit behind it, a demon behind it, that controls you. Satan has put principal, for, for, for Apostle Paul puts it this way, we do not fight against what? Flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, forces. Can, can somebody go to that text for us real quick? Elder, what's, what's, the, what's the passage? Elder Clinton, what scripture is that? We do not fight and wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality forces of darkness. What scripture is that? 
Ephesians? Ephesians 6, 10? Can somebody read for us real quick? 6, 10. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the devil. Okay, take your time there. So again, the first one is what? Against what? Um, against what? Not against flesh and blood. But against what? Principality. The first one is what? Principality. And again, when you watch the video, you will get to understand. Satan has rankings in the spirit realm. And as we go through the you know, the, the teachings, we're talking about angels. And after we're done, we're going to go into deep technology. Amen? Satan has established principalities in the governed territory. So this whole western world area that you see, when you see certain behaviors and patterns within a certain community, there is a principality that oversees them. They, they are basically like the managers of that territory and ensures that the activities of the devil takes place. Move on. What's the next one? Against powers. Against powers. Powers talks about government. Principalities and government. So we have people in power, authorities. So that's why the, the Apostle Paul encourages us to pray for our leaders, our people in authority. Because if we don't pray for the Spirit of God to guide them, we are doomed. In the city of Toronto, we are where we are right now, and we have what, what is coming to us because we are not praying. The church is not praying. We ourselves are not taking our personal Christian life seriously enough to pray for others. And all we do is we complain the moment we see them act up. Oh, it's against our beliefs. What have you done to preserve this gospel in your own life? Amen. What's the next one? Um, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Rulers of darkness. So again, there are rulers as well. Darkness. Of darkness. Rulers. But, and I heard, I heard uh, Jim Ramirez talk and he said, you know, in, in the realm of Satan, they are so organized, but when it comes to the church, they are not even organized enough. Amen. And these days you hear people, oh, I don't like organized religion and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, really, you don't like organized religion. And if I want to encourage us, even as a church, as small as we are, to be very organized. Put things in place. Strategize. Move it. We have to do things in excellence. Amen? Amen. So, as, and especially as leaders, if we, if we set a time that this is what we're going to do, I expect you. Let's be honest. And unity is critical. If, if the kingdom of hell is moving in unity, what about the church? And that's why the devil is not afraid of church. That's why demons can walk in the church and go out and nothing happens. If the presence of God is here and the, 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 the angels and, and, the, and the power of God, the spirit of God dwells in here, no demon is allowed to walk into this place and leave here the same. But we are responsible for creating that atmosphere. On Wednesday, we learned about the, about the angels and the, the, the instruction that God gave the children of Israel when they were building the Ark of the Tabernacle. That the angels, the children, they, they have to construct in such a way that they will win space one another. And everything that they do, it has to be in sync. And once they are done, they, all the angels, they gather around and they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. As we go through the book of Revelation, it says the angels, they gather around the 24 elders and the throne and they cry, Holy, holy is the Lamb that was slain. So why come to church and relax except like you don't even know what is happening in heaven? And to give you a little bit of credit, maybe nobody ever took the time to teach you. And we only have one perception about church that, oh, let me go to church, let me feel good. That's the tradition that my parents went to church, let me go to church. No. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? Yeah. It's not about the music, it's not how well we sound, it's not how eloquent I am. If you're looking for eloquency, well, go, go, go to some sort of motivational seminar. If you're looking for music, that sounds good. This is not a place to be. Go to a Beyonce concert. Because Beyonce is anointed to do that. But in the house of God, what we do is we worship. Amen. What we do is we worship. Amen. What we do is we worship. Amen. What we do is we worship. We drum with the host of heaven and we cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb that was slain who was and is and is to come. Amen. If God gives us the resources to make it a little excellent, great. And that can be done. And Hollywood does it very well. Hollywood, they know how to do church. 
They will hire all the right people, the right singers, the right musicians, but their heart is not connected. So what is actually being poured into you? Because I think sometimes what we are looking for is the satisfaction of emotions. Oh, it sounds good and I felt goosebumps, but was God there? <laughs> oh, it sounded amazing. Everybody was running around the church. Whoa, 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 whoa. What made you run? Were you trying to just prove to somebody that you were super spiritual than them? Or were you really excited because God opened the heavens and you it got you so excited? I hear people say, oh, Pastor Dama, I don't know, he can't, he can't preach. Who cares? Who am I trying to impress? I'm not in no preaching competition with anybody. I'm on an assignment to teach the truth and give you the truth so you can make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. And God has people that he is called to everyone. And not everybody is called to us. Not everybody is called to me, and I understand that. But don't try to put your expectations on me to become who I'm not, or who God has not called me to be. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Amen? Amen? Amen. Those are the things that happen in the soulish realm. The envy, the jealousy, the, the lust of the flesh, the pride of, of life. What are you allowing yourself to be so sucked into? Think about it. Today is Sunday. I know a lot of people are not here, other people had to work and other people, but again when you when you when you narrow it down, it boils down to the things that our soul desires that's preventing And I can I can even challenge folk. And I've done it, and I've made that experience it, and I always said when you were in the marketplace, like, well, you have to work on a Sunday. Well, it's, it's your daily bread, right? So you have to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. But can you even go back and say, well, I'm a believer. And, and let, me, let me tell you, it's your right. Yeah. It's your right. You have the right not to work on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? In the labor standards, it's your right. You don't have to. They don't have to. If they let you, you can sue them. But do you really want God in I mean, that bad or that much? To say, you know what? I will not let anything come between me and my God Amen. and my relationship with God. What is actually in the middle of your relationship? And that's all these things that happening in the soulish realm. Amen? Amen? Let me keep moving. See, the responsibility of the soul then is to submit itself continuously to the spirit. When it does that, the soul will take us in the ways of the Lord. God must bring our will to a point where it has no desire than to submit itself to the wishes of the Holy Spirit. Are you submitted to the Holy Spirit? Or are you submitted to lust? Are you submitted to the Holy Spirit? Or are you submitted to your own pride? Remember, the pride comes before the fall. Just before the fall. The Bible talks about the last days. As we go through the book of Revelation, it talks about perilous times will come. Difficult times will come. And we have a whole bunch of wealthy people, heads of state, in Davos right now, in Europe, trying to strategize and trying to figure out how they're going to encounter the next global depression. Because the economy, if you thought 2007, 2008 was worse, listen, this is going to be worse than ever. Amen. Amen? Amen. And I'm not a preacher of doom and gloom by the truth that the, 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 the truth is true. It's going to happen. Yeah. But what can I know for sure? He said, they that know your God shall do what? I mean, that's point. So when you hear, Jesus said, when you hear all these things, don't be troubled. You will hear rumors of war in diverse places. And what do we hear today? And as a matter of fact, CNN doesn't even report everything that goes on in the world. They only report the things that to, to get their own network going. But if you think, you will see. There are wars and rumors of wars. Syrians right now are struggling. People are dying from hunger. The Bible talks about it in Matthew 24. That paralyzed times will come and there will be famine in place, different places. 
We are seeing all these things. Can we actually go to Matthew 24? I know I'm talking about the soul, but we are experiencing all these in the soulish realm. We are experiencing all these in the soulish realm. And I really want to warn us as a church. And when you go home, I want you to start warning your loved ones, your friends and families. I know my, my father-in-law, the Clinton, loves talking about, he loves these type of messages because he's all about fire and, uh, and, and brimstone. But every now and then we need to hear it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and I read Matthew 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him and showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be let here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Somebody say, Take heed. Take heed. I type your neighbor on the shoulder and say, Take heed. Take heed. Don't let anybody deceive you. Amen. And that's what's happening in our churches today. We are being deceived and we are still patronizing. Because they sound good, the music sounds good, they sound very eloquent. We are being deceived. Do you know who feeds you? And that's why for me, I don't mind putting my business on blast. Because I'd rather you know me in my proclivity so that you know that we are all working out our own salvation and trying to make it to heaven. Because sometimes when you, have, when, when you put people on a pedestal, well, I go to that church because don't you know that? You, they make you think that they have lost, they never sin, or they do everything right. Run for your life. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, including myself. And as much as I preach to you, the Apostle Paul says, I'm also present toward the mark. I'm working on my own salvation with fear and trembling because after I preach this gospel to you, I have to make sure that I'm also living out what I've preached. Amen? Are you with me? Verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Again, remember the things that we learned in Revelation. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So all these things that are happening right now, this, these are signs to show us that he's coming. But he's saying that, no, he's not coming yet. And ye shall hear of wars, and, sorry, let me, verse 7. Uh, for, for the nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Haven't we heard of all these things at least within the last year? Yeah. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Aren't Christians the most hated people on the face of the planet right now? Aren't we? Just because of what we believe in. But let me let me give you a little secret. When people try to accuse you or try to just hate you and say you're a believer and you're this and you're that, let them know that the God that you serve, if it's wrong to believe or have a faith, that causes you to love on others. A faith that causes you to just feed the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. Help the afflicted. Tell me. How wrong am I? Or are you only just pointing out the fact that the Bible, and oftentimes when they quote the Bible, they only quote, they quote that couple of passages of scripture that, that says, oh, God hates or the homosexual is an abomination. Those, but you can tell them, think about it. There's a whole lot of things in this Bible. Do you know everything else? Are you only just singling out just that piece? And I put it this way. You can challenge them and just ask them. Do you think that your parents love you? Have your parents ever, ever corrected you or rebuked you in love? As much as they love you, they may say some things that you wouldn't like, but it's for your own good. And it's the same love that we have from the Father. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. But He tells us not to do certain things because there are certain things that He doesn't want you. Environment. And I believe every family 
has some things that they want and some things that they don't want near them. It's the same thing with God's family because it's an abomination unto God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's keep going. What was that? Verse 10 eight, eight. to 8. Yeah. 8. And all these things are beginning of sorrows. I'm sorry, I was like, um, <laughs> verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. As a church, let's be very careful about, about this piece here. Many shall be offended and shall betray the spirit of Judas. You get offended, then you betray. You get offended, then you betray. Some people, I had saw Pastor Thompson put on his face and said, some people don't go to say they don't go to church because of folk who go to church. Many shall be offended. The moment you someone offends you, be ready, they're just about to betray you. People that you are close to, people that you love, Jesus loved Judas. But he got offended. So he betrayed him. It's the same thing with the church. You may come to church, I may preach a certain message, I may not even know your lifestyle. But the Spirit of God may lead me to say certain things, and it may convict you. And at that point, it's either it's up to you to make a change, or you're going to be offended. So it's either you humble yourself and heed to instruction and say, okay, you know what, God, I understand you're speaking to me. I'm going to make the necessary changes. I'm not going to take against uh, any offense against the man of God or woman of God. I know this is for my own good. Give me the grace to humble myself and learn and move on from here. We are in the last days. Don't get offended. Tap somebody on the show and say, don't, don't get offended. Okay. Find somebody and say, don't get offended. Don't get And then he goes on what? They shall hate one another. And one of the things that I would hate to do, and I actually see that in Christendom today, that we don't like other people just because they don't come to our church. It's terrible. It's terrible. We don't like them because they don't come to our church. We don't like them because they left our church. So what? If they left our church, let them go. It's, my mind then is, if you leave our church, just go. I don't have anything against you. I just know that I cannot build with you. I just cannot trust you. But I don't hate you. I cannot entrust you with anything. Jesus said, don't cast your crown before swine. Amen? 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 If something happens and I go, you've shown me your character. That's you, why when you go to a workplace, you go for a job, they interview, they do reference checks. They want to know if they can entrust you. These days, they go to the point of doing credit checks. They want to know that you are trustworthy enough that you are even not able to take care of your finances. So it's the same thing with the church. It's only in the church that everything is, we feel like everything goes. We misbehave the way we want. We will not behave like that at work. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the church, we want to behave like that and get away with it. You will not talk to your boss anyhow. Yes. Like in the church, we want to do that and speak against the man of God. The Bible said, do not touch my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Uh, in the church we do that. There's a price to pay for it. You won't be late for work, right? But you'll be late for church. How serious are you about the work about the face of God? Do you know who your source is? You think that your your your, your job is your source? No, God is your source. Amen. Because without God there is no job. Amen. I mean, you, you can sell your soul to the devil and the devil can provide you with even a better job. But if you say you can call yourself a Christian, then do as such. Amen. 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 Don't sell your soul. Don't sell your soul.
this is words! What do you want? This is Edwards. I know I ask you this like every week, but would you like to ride to church with me? Oh, uh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <laughs> Okay, here we are.